Hello! Today I wanted to share with you how I create procedural flares inside of Blender. Now, to start this project out, I actually had some really nice reference video. I have this old vintage lens that makes crazy flares, and so in the movie clip editor of Blender, I just tracked the light source here with a tracking marker, and that gave me some nice realistic motion to start with, and it also gave me some really good reference, like I mentioned, to see what actual flares kind of look like and how they behave. Now something I noticed is there's the original light source, which is really bright, and then there's also something on the other side of the frame that's usually exactly opposite of it that kind of is just wild, bloomy, crazy effects, as you can see here. And it all kind of centers on the middle of the frame here. So if we take a look here in the 3D view, this is the rig that I've got going on. And basically, if I simplify this, it's two empties. If we take the camera and go Shift S and go cursor to selected, we can go Shift A drop in an empty here. Let's just use a sphere just so we can see the difference. And I'm going to shift select the camera and I'm going to go control C and that's with the copy attributes add-on enabled. And I'm going to copy the rotation from the camera to the empty. And then I can just grab the empty, hit G and then double tap Z and move it on its local Z axis. Now the reason we do it like this is so that it's exactly in the center of the camera and that can be a nice little point for our flare elements to anchor onto. Now for this empty all the way back here, what I did was I actually took this tracker with it selected. We can go into reconstruction and hit link empty to track. And if we look here, there's actually two empties going on kind of in the same spot. But yeah, what that does is it sets up an empty that tracks with the light source of your original footage or whatever you tracked in your footage. It doesn't have to be a light source. Now this empty in the center is always pointing towards the empty from the track. And the way you do that, if we take this center empty for example, is you go into the constraints tab here, set up a object constraint, and we're just gonna want damped track. And we can use the dropper tool to select the target. And now we've got two empties that are both tracking to that other empty. Now I'm just going to delete this for now and let's just go back to using this original one. What I did for the flare elements, which you can see here, is I basically just imported a plane. So once again, let's go Shift S, cursor to selected with this empty selected. I'm going to go Shift A, add mesh plane, Shift select the empty and Control C once more and copy rotation. And now we've got this plane with the same rotation as the empty. Let's rotate it on its x-axis by 90 degrees, so RXX 90. And now it's kind of lining up with the way it's tracking. Let's just make sure we shift select the empty and go control P, object. And now this plane is moving along and it can be a really nice flare element for us. And what we could do now is we can go G, double tap Z, to move it along its local Z axis. And we could set it up at the source here, or we could duplicate that, and we could move that closer to the camera so that it's closer and we get this kind of inverse flare type stuff going on. And that's pretty cool. Now I'm gonna re-enable what I had for the flare elements here and just go through them real quick. Basically, the way I created this was with a gradient texture. You can see I've got that from generated coordinates going into mapping node with negative 0.5 on both of the X and Y locations. And that just puts it right in the center of the plane. And if we look at this, that's not very exciting, but if we put it through a color ramp, you can see we get these really nice radial effects and we can make sure we stop it soon enough so it doesn't go off the plane by clamping that a little bit. And then we could put that through a multiply node if we want a little bit more control over it. And I use that multiply node to mix two shaders, a transparent shader and an emission shader. And looking at that, you can see there's actually a bit of color going on. I took the gradient texture and put that through a color ramp. And that just came up with this crazy color. We've got some blue, purple, and red. And that just feeds into the color of the emission shader. So that's how you create a basic element. You can see some of these have a little bit more different designs for the color ramps or some different colors going on here. These ones for the light source are super basic and just round and white. And this long one here, I thought I'd try to make an anamorphic flare. So it's only copying the location of that empty. It's not copying any of the rotation. And I just scaled it out nice and blue. And if we want that crazy over the top, we can turn up the multiply value. But yeah, that's how I created the flare elements and the rig for them. And as you can see here, we can actually just make the background transparent and it pops on over top of all the other crazy flare elements that were already happening. If we disable the flare elements here, you can see it just adds a little bit maybe, 
or you can just use it as your own custom flair for whatever the heck you want. Now, if you're a visual effects artist, I've got a gift for you, and that is this pack of free smoke elements. And these are seamless and looping, so they should be super easy to drop into your blender scene and just add in a little bit more life. If that sounds useful to you, there's a link in the description where you can pick those up for free, so definitely go ahead and check those out. But hey, other than that, I hope you have an excellent day, and cheers!